Hello everyone, we're going to talk about your at-home fitness workout for Saturday, March 14th, 2020. We're going to start with a crossover knee-hugging glute stretch. Uh, this is sort of a track and field classic, 30 seconds per side. And then we're going to go into a little bit of an extended warm-up, three times through here. We have 10 Spider-Man steps with a thoracic rotation, 10 high knee lunge with a twist, HKL plus T, high knee lunge plus twist, 10 pillar to planks, and 10 crab extensions. Three times through. Let's take a look at that. All right, let's get to this warm up. Starting with a knee crossover glute stretch, sitting on the ground nice and tall, cross one knee over, wrap your arms around it, and squeeze. And you should feel this sort of in the outside of your hip butt glute on the side you're squeezing. Nice and tall, if it's easy, get down there. Squeeze more, more, more. We're going for 30 seconds per side. If you get to 30 seconds, you're like, ooh, this still feels really tight. Hang out there. Give yourself another 15, 20, 30 seconds. But we want a big glute stretch on each side here. Remember to get both sides, of course. Ooh, this side's tighter. I may need to go a little longer on my right side than my left. Next piece of the warm up Spider Man step plus thoracic rotation. Big step forward. Both hands on the inside of that front foot. I'd like you to plant the outside hand. So the hand furthest from your foot, you're gonna reach up, over, as much rotation as you can get out of this. Back to that position, switch it up. When you step forward, we're pressing your hips toward the ground, staying square. Again, outside hand stays planted. Rotate up, over, and back. Back and forth, five on each side here. Next piece of the warm up is another classic high knee lunge with a twist. You're gonna plant one leg hard into the ground, squeeze that knee to your chest, strong lunge forward and out. At the bottom of this lunge, staying tall, we're gonna rotate as much as you can. Try and look behind you. Back off that front leg to neutral, plant your leg, squeeze, strong lunge, rotate, Strong back to neutral. Try and make every part of this lunge look really good. Also, five on each side. Next part of our warm up pillar to plank. Pillar uh, is also a plank on your forearm. So we will start out on your forearms, really strong plank, hip open. We're going to move one arm at a time, drive, drive up to a plank, drive, drive, controlled all the way down, back to that pillar. Up and down is one rep. We're gonna get 10. I wanna show you something that often goes wrong with this piece. So from the side, starting in a pillar, really strong. We want up, body in a long straight line, down, body in a long straight line. What we often see is the up goes pretty well and then people leave their butt in the air. No good. Up, think, squeeze your butt, Drop everything at once, everything comes back up. We want your entire trunk and core and hips engaged for all your pillar to planks. Again, 10, up and down 10 times. Last part of this warm up, crab extensions. Feet hip width apart, hands right under your shoulders. Don't go out, don't go back, right under your shoulders. If your wrist can tolerate it, middle finger pointed toward your heels. If that's too much, your fingers can point wherever you want, but wrist still right under your shoulders. We're gonna set and press through your heels, lock those elbows out, hips as far off the ground as you can, and back down. High as you can, and back down. Really squeeze hard at the top. You can get a lot of activation out of this little drill. That's the last part of the warm up. Again, three times through. On to talking about Saturday's Metcon. It's a 25 minute EMOM that is every minute on the minute, you're going to accomplish one thing and hopefully rest of the remainder of that minute. For most of these, there should be rest built in. Let's see what they are. First minute, this is one, two, three, four, five. That is each minute you'll have one thing. So first minute is one, second minute is two, so on and so forth. We'll go around five times. First minute, six per side, alternating upright rows with a book. We'll take a look at what that is in a moment. Second one, 20 sit-ups, lots of ways to do this. Third per side, dynamic step-ups on the stairs. This is more than walking up the stairs, so make sure you watch the demo in the next part. Uh, AMRAP couch dips, and of course the fifth minute, 
rest. There is potentially no rest built in number four. It's an AMRAP. So theoretically, hopefully, you're using the entirety of that minute to get as much work done as you can. That fifth minute is for you to recover, write your score down somewhere, and get ready for that st for station one, which is coming around again. Uh, technically, this is a 24 minute piece. If you do the math, your 24th minute will end on those couch dips. Let's take a look what these movements look like. All right, looking at the movements for this Metcon, first minute, six per side, alternating upright row with the book. We are again going to use our old friend, Anatomy and Physiology, ninth edition. Don't use the fifth edition, that's a cop out, we all know it. RX's Anatomy and Physiology, ninth edition. Uh, you want something you can absolutely grasp with one hand. Ideally, it's a little bit of a challenge. Letting this be some grip work, as well as some shoulder core uh, pulling work can be really useful. Hold it right in the center of that book, nice and tall. We're gonna pull up and out. If things start getting a little bit tough, you can absolutely take a little break at the hip, give yourself some up and out from the side, here, up, here. Things to avoid, don't punch yourself in the chin. And I mean that movement wise as well as not punching yourself in the chin. We don't want this shoulder rotated way forward, coming in here, not a particularly useful movement, puts a lot of stress on that front deltoid. Up nice and tall, we're gonna pull up and out, up and out. If things start getting a little heavy, break at that hip a little, up and out, give yourself a little bit of leg, totally cool. Six on each side. You can break this up wherever you want. Uh, I think, I don't remember if it's written alternating or not, uh, but uh, either way is really useful. If this is a grip challenge to hold on to it for six, six there, switch hands. Pro tip, I would start with your non-dominant hand here. Get that grip work out of the way early while you're fresh. Uh, six on each side, rest the remainder of the minute. Station two of the Metcon, this is your second minute. 20 sit-ups. Uh, now, number-wise, talking about this, we want you to have, let's say, at least 15 seconds of rest. So depending on how you are with sit-ups or how sit-ups treat you, you may wanna turn this number down. I mean it sincerely, don't do sit-ups for 59 seconds, 30 to 45 seconds at the most. Four sit-ups, you can certainly do. Butterfly sit-ups, soles of your feet touching each other, all the way down, shoulders touch the ground, hands overhead, all the way up. Always top of a setup is shoulder on top of your hips. If it helps you to have a target, I like using toes or the floor right in front of you, but what I really care about is your shoulder getting up, nice and tall, all the way down, right back up again. If you are more comfortable feet flat on the ground, totally cool with that, sit all the way up. Uh, if you are near a couch, uh, or a piece of furniture, and hopefully you are, because that's gonna come up in a moment. If you wanna anchor your toes under a couch, or some weights or some, something else, and do anchored sit-ups, totally cool. Second minute is 20 sit-ups. You should have at least 10, 15 seconds of rest. All right, team, third minute, Dynamic step ups on the stairs, we're doing six per side, so we're taking it to the stairs. I wanted you to see exactly what this looks like to really do it on the thing, and not just a stack of plates or a weight bench or something like that. So, on a set of stairs, most people are gonna use either one or two stairs to do this. We're looking for your knee to be a little lower than your hip, so don't be a hero, don't come way up here where my knee is far above my hip. I would probably do two steps because of my height. I'm about six feet tall. One step is totally cool. So we're gonna plant one leg, drive hard off this front leg. I'm gonna do it in slow-mo first. Drive that other knee up high, back to standing, back to your beginning position. So from the other side, so you can see, leg is planted. I'm going to set up alternating arms, drive hard off this front leg. I'm gonna stay tall, other knee up, and back down, up, and back down. If this is scary, and it might be, hopefully you have a railing or a wall. So, same thing, you can use it for balance or even to really give yourself a little help, maybe speed you up a little bit, hang on to it, drive, and back. Drive, and back, wall, very similar. Standing, oh, did I miss a step? All right, standing, hang on to that wall, Drive and back, 
drive, and back. Stay tall. The only thing that we see that we don't, we would like to avoid here is the getting bent over on the way up. That means we're giving away your trunk and just kind of leaning onto that leg, no good. If that means you need to take a step lower to stay tall, that's better. Stay tall, six per side, rest the remainder of the minute. All right, we're in our super secret coach's lounge sanctum for the fourth part here, so we can show you what it's like, because I think this is sort of what it's gonna be like for you at home. We have AMRAP couch chips. So first thing, coffee table's gotta get out of the way. Not a problem, gently. I'm just gonna move it off to the side here. If all of your whiteboard markers keep rolling around, uh, I suggest keeping them in a better place. We're gonna set up for the couch dip. Two ways to do, well, there's a couple ways to do this, uh, but setting up your hands. So hands are gonna be right under your shoulders. You're gonna stay nice and tall, down to the ground, back up again. Down to the ground, back up again. If you find it tough holding onto the cushions, just pull that couch up, hands right on the more solid part, down to the ground, back up, down to the ground, back up. Things we don't wanna see, don't get a million miles from the couch. This is a much harder dip and really a lot of pressure on your shoulders, potentially on your elbows. When you are locked out, we want your uh, shoulders right on top of your wrists, hands right underneath those shoulders. We're doing a bunch of these, so it doesn't have to be super hard to start with. If you start doing them and you're like, this doesn't feel like much, uh, keep with it. 30, 40 of those in a minute is going to feel like a lot. Uh, if you don't have a couch or you're just too tough, too cool for school, you could use something a little bit taller, same idea, hands under the shoulders, you'll get a little more range of motion. As many as you can in a minute. Let's say we're looking for a minimum of phone call. As far as numbers go, let's say we're looking for a minimum of 15 every minute, potentially a lot higher than that. But if you're getting less than 15, we probably need to use an easier version. Oh, another way to scale down. I don't think I said this earlier. Let's move the chair. If these couch dips are getting too hard, bend those legs. Bring your legs in, give yourself a little more support. You can really drive off your heels and get a little more out of it. As many dips as you can, the fifth minute is rest, 25 minutes, that's five rounds of this EMOM. Have fun.